Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever you are watching. Hello, 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 and welcome to our phase two. This is our day one of our phase two of immersion circle. <sighs> we have gotten so far already. I'll just recap briefly where we are actually coming off of. Today, we're sharing our one day with, there's gonna be a lot of information that is a stepping stone for us today. And as I was preparing, I thought it would actually be really nice to share this with a few other people. So today we are co-sharing with a few other people and just whether you join us later or not, this is a really good place to be and ponder upon because what we're going to do is start today, set the foundation and then build on top of it. So what we have so far is this beautiful circle, if you will, that's the gift of life. And what we, if you've seen the video or if you've been with us live, anything and everything goes in there that is the truth of who we are. We start with the inner voice, we bring in the self-love, the receiving of our self-love, the receiving of what is our life's purpose? What is it that I am here to create? Or what gives me joy? You know, creation is in joy it, through pull of our inner voice, of our self-love, not of the push of the mind. Forgiveness is a big one. Forgiveness is it's like a stepping stone into, it's like a glue that pulls these all together. And then what we realize is that is all of us goes in there. It's our fears, our sadness, our anger, discouragement, judgment. All of that is a beautiful circle of where we fit in currently. And some of us have it bigger, some of us have it smaller. It actually depends on the outer circumstances for the most part. Where we're moving next, It's a blank slate. However, we're starting with the same circle. So we take the same circle of who we are. This is me. You, you, you. I'll make this as me. And for the purpose of our next level, this is going to be well being and health, a bigger picture of health. If I'm someone who is completely healthy and I don't have to worry about my well-being and I'm doing really, really well in that department, that is beautiful. And in that case, I can make this anything else. I can make this relationships. I can make this um, finances. I can make this career and opportunity as far as self-realization. I can make this circle anything. And in there... For our purposes and our purposes of the community, we have realized that there is a deep, as much as we believe that, yes, I know I can heal. I don't necessarily know exactly how it's going to happen because I have exhausted either my resources or I have exhausted my doctors and they have fired me, which as we decided was a good thing. This is going to be the place where we're currently starting. And we're only going to go about 20, 30 minutes to get this foundation set. And what I'll ask you at the end is actually to make your own chart that we will then work with the next day and the day after. For me, so this is, you know, fairly okay. Um, I started at a young age with eczema. There's a lot of pain and trauma in there, especially as a kid and everybody looking at me and thinking I'm contagious and oh my God, go away. Even in medical school, that was the saddest part. But that, that went away and that gave me a lot of mm, oomph for, oh wow, there's this condition that is supposed to be forever and it's gone. Wait a minute, there is something profound happening here. I better pay attention. So that's in my inner circle right here. Then I had a lot of issues with eyesight started with medical school. So I was told, oh, this is, you know, you're studying too much and all that and it'll just get worse and at some point it will be okay. All right. 
then I had to go through a lot of dental work and we kind of realized that dental work is a huge piece in our society and the reason for that that it has been disconnected from our health yet it's such a like front runner as far as affecting our physical body and at that point I had a lot of dentists fire me and I had a lot of trouble and it was like one thing after another and from that a lot of other things started including the eyesight that I never connected the dots back then when I was in medical school but I started gaining weight, you know, it's like, okay, no matter what I do, started gaining weight. It's like, okay, I'll settle at certain weight and I'll just keep eating healthy and, you know, okay there. I'll be okay there. I started having a lot of insomnia, right? Well, you know, I'll figure it out somehow. So I'll settle there and figure out my amount of hours. There's some inflammation overall in the body, right? So pains and aches, but you know what? I'm okay, I could still hike, I could still do my sunset, I'll just go chiropractors and all right, I'll settle here. This is pretty good. If I can manage to live my life like that, I'll be okay here. So I'm kind of push and pull, push and pull. I try to pull and then I kind of just settle. It's like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm going to maintain, I'm going to do what I need to do to just keep an okay state of well-being. Except there is part of me that's absolutely not happy about that. There is a part of me that has settled and there's part of me that, that knows there is so much more available to me. And as I am trying to expand the space because you know, doctors say, you know, just take this and deal with this. Dentists say the same. Chiropractors just keep on adjusting me, which is very, very perfect of him. You know, I'm checking my eyesight. When it gets worse, I get new glasses. Okay, so I'm just like part of the system here. And there is part of me, that inner voice that keeps saying, there is something not right about this. There is something not right. There has to be another place. There is another place. Let's get there. In order to get there, we need to see, and we have had that, a lot of you have shared that, like, I know there is more, I know I can do this. So in order to get there, we need to realize what actually we're up against. Yes, we are up against our own illnesses and what we've been through and traumas with doctors and physicians and surgeries and we are definitely up against that that's like a pushing sort of continuously against even if i know better unconsciously there is this deep voice saying well you have been through that and you haven't gotten there so what's different now right then we're up against the the general medical world the general medical world that from day one you know i started medical school when i was 18 so for me that's 20 years of medical school no sorry my goodness 10 years of medical school 20 years of practicing medicine going to conferences whether it's the naturopathic world or the traditional world they both have the limitation and trust me i have been to so many of the conferences and seen so many doctors for my purposes, for the purposes of my patient, that push is very strong. Like that is very strong. It's happening to us right now in a big way and we're really seeing it. It's becoming more conscious, but unconsciously, subconsciously, it has been a big one. And it has been what has fueled our family as well what has fueled our family as far as parents what has fueled our family members as far as spouses sisters brothers even our children you know so it's their beliefs and it's also what they have been through what conditions have they been through so we've seen it and if we've seen it and there is a lot of it going on it's kind of a big one it's kind of really pushing in on us. It's like, oh my gosh, they're going through this. Like, who am I to do something different over here if they haven't been able to? And in all of that comes the family history, right? You've heard that every single time. 
we go to a physician, they ask us, what is your family history? Do you have heart disease? Do you have cancer? Do you have all of that in your family history? Oh, wait, thyroid issues. Oh, okay. That means you're probably going to end up, oh, diabetes. Oh, that means you're going to end up with that. That's huge. This so-called family history with genes. Oh my goodness. Like it's so unconscious in our field, but that is a big push. And some of them are pushing more in like the family history over here with my mom going through certain things and her mom, that's a big one. So I'm mean, gonna encourage you for you to do this and see what is actually really pushing in that I may not have been realizing or that has not been in the conscious forefront. Because as you can see, our beautiful gift of life space is under a huge attack and it is not a very clear one. It is not, it's, it's, you know, the one I shared with you, you know, do your part, get your shot, like all that is very, this is a little bit more, less subtle, I would say, but everything else is so subtle, yet the force is huge and the combined pressure is really big. It's like, I gotta do, I gotta do quite a bit to just maintain. I gotta do quite a bit to just even keep my eczema not from not coming back. Cause there have been times that I've been to doctors and they're saying that's not possible. I've started getting some patches of eczema after that. It's like, wait a minute, what is going on here? The mind is so powerful and this is huge. And on top of that, so there is the family history that we have been put on us, right? If your family member has this mother, father, grandfather, grandmother, then you are this much more likely. That actually is not the case. Most of this is not the case, but we have been made to believe that it is. The other one that's pretty big one and that we do not speak about with our doctors, it's not spoken about much, it's something called our ancestry. And I don't mean a family physical history, I mean our ancestry as far as this pressure, this, our mother has this, our father has this in a whole different way our grandfather, our grandmother, there was different times, there's different pressures, there was different fears, there were different conditions, people were dying completely, you know, unexpectedly from different things. So that we also have as a pressure, that one is very much unseen, it's kind of in the background, however, it's really pushing as well. So it's the ancestry, it's the fact that we've spoken about when I heal this and I expand this, I actually heal not only forward for my generations because I'm not bringing this pressure in, I am bringing a whole different opportunity for them. We're also in the electromagnetic field of who we are, we're actually healing backwards. So that is an important piece. And that is where our ancestry comes in. So look at this, hope you can see it okay. But the idea is if you don't, there is this me that was so big, look at that. Like we are so huge, right? And we are so self-realized, like all of this. All of this is still a huge foundation. That's why we started with this. It's not that we're abandoning it, quite the opposite. Every single day, we are remembering it. We're going to pull this off and put it on our wall as the foundation. And then we realize that on top of it, there may be something else going on. And there may be something going on that we have not looked at, that we have not been taught, that quite the opposite. Any time I go to a physician, medical doctor, naturopathic doctor, chiropractor, dentist, I am this me stepping into this pressure of these arrows and so much more in a doctor's office because doctor has this so trained. This is like me as a doctor, this is ingrained family history and you know, oh, you name it. I won't even go there, but you get, you get the gist. So what is the 
what is the next step here? So first of all, we really do want to take a pause. And while we have this big picture of who we are on this other page available in front of us, we create this. Where am I? What are my anchors? Like, where am I okay with? Where am I not okay with? What, what is holding me afloat? You know, I'm eating well, I'm sleeping, I'm exercising, I'm doing yoga, I'm meditating big time. I'm doing all of these to really have me focus on the inner me and have me expand. So the idea would be, right? So there's a, there's a part of us that's expanding outward always. That's the spiral we talk about. We go in a spiral and we always move up. And the moving up is also moving out. And the more we are aware of this dynamic in anything in our life, this is a general health which transforms into well being. But this is with anything because there's always arrows from the outer world coming in. So the idea would be the natural next step would be, what do I do? Well, I have to really practice my inner space. And we did that meditation, I believe day two, where we focus on centering in, especially if I'm feeling that these outer arrows are taking a hold of me, or all these fears of the outside world. At any given point, I go inside, I start breathing. So remember our breath, remember our focus on the inner voice, the self-love, the receiving, the forgiveness. The idea is, yes, we do push out. We do start there. At the point that this gets overwhelming or I'm looking for the next step, we do want to push out a little bit to... When we meditate, you know, I just listened to this beautiful podcast and it was, even if it takes 15 minutes of sitting down for one minute of connection, it's a good thing. <laughs> Means we start slow and we move out. So we do that for a little bit. However, in the long run, this pushing against the pressure is not going to work. And that's what happened. We have done that. You know, we have pushed and it has come in and we have pushed and it has come in and we have expanded some and we have learned some, but in the long sustainable way, if we think about continuously having to push against so much pressure, that's going to be a tough one. So what do we do? Well, the first place is we realize this, we make our own chart we focus on it, we start noticing these pressures. And for a time being, morning and night, 10, 15 minutes, we not necessarily push, but create a little bit more space for us to reconnect over here. And then, and then the big picture, and that will be our focus. Where we actually go, we go into a place that encompasses all of these. Just like we did with this, right? We're not pushing fear and sadness and anger and judgment out. That wouldn't work. That would only decrease our focus. That would actually disempower us in the long run. And it's the same thing with this. Every time we have to push against something, it actually creates weakening in the long run and disempowerment. And that's what has happened to most of us, me, inclu me included. So I'm speaking as to what I have seen for me and for my patients. And what I see is the next step that we're asked to step into and also next step in medicine. As we push, it becomes exhausting. It becomes like this push-pull and there is a pulling where, I, oh my God. So either I wake up and I get to a different level and it better be soon or I'm giving up. So we're not giving up we are going into the different level. And what that is, is that very consciously, and this happens overnight for some people, and it's very profound and it's absolutely available. So it is not, I have to go years to get there to get my well-being. 
absolutely have seen it happen overnight for people that are those miraculous healings that we talk about miraculous that people just heal overnight. Like Anita Morgani, I just spoke to somebody about her. There's few other people that we will reference. But the idea is that we realize whether it is overnight and whether it is over a series of days or months or even years, that these pressures really are not based in truth. That is, that is the simplest way I can put it to start with. And you'll see there's many ways to go to really get there. But the biggest take home message of today is this is me and what is my truth? This is, that has been our focus. And then the focus is expanding this place into these as well as they mean as as much as they love us, our parents, our, our spouses, like I have a patient and her husband is a doctor and she's stage four cancer. And she literally, like what had to happen for her was this. And I share that with you and then but I was blown away. She did that in an hour, but it was so much of her husband's pressure was keeping her here without her even seeing it. And when she started seeing it and when she started seeing that as well as they mean, and as much they're following the rules of the world, it's not based in truth. And therefore I don't have to push. I can invite them in with compassion and I can expand my field into a profound state of health and well-being. And that is that for today. Every time we get a glimpse of a different picture, every time we get a glimpse into the unconscious and the power that we have to actually change it by bringing it in with love and compassion, it's quite profound. It is simple, not always easy, but the truth, as I have learned from many teachers, is always simple. And this is our starting point for the next phase of our immersion circle. So I'm going to invite you all to take a, as big piece of paper as you can and create something to this extent for yourself. Where am I? Where am I coming from? What are my main pressure right words to it really helps. Take the general ones and then take the ones that are the most pressing for you. And that gives us a starting point where we can bring those with you tomorrow or share those if you can. Take a photo and share those in our community and we'll start there tomorrow. Okay, so I'll let you ponder on this. Thank you so much for joining us today. So today was just an intro to getting us a foundation and we'll take both of these, especially this one tomorrow, same time, 9 a.m. And I'll see you all and we will connect and see where we go together as a community, okay? Thank you so much, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Appreciate you. Take care, bye-bye.